I think you're cute. <laughs> Nothing? Okay, I try to start off your day with a nice thing, and I get nothing. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you were talking to me, Santana, or Ortiz. We're the only ones who are unmuted at this point. They're not cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see the way we're going on this. I'd like to welcome right. everybody. This is Ross Foreman with Impact Wrestling, and this week's media teleconference is, of course, getting off to a uh, roaring start. We have... Uh, of course, the illustrious members of LAX, we have Santana and Ortiz, Tag Team Dynamite, and the uh, yeah, yeah. legendary Conan. Uh, Santana and Ortiz, I'd like to start it out with you guys. And uh, before we the get going with uh, the traditional wrestling questions, I'd like both of you two to address the situation uh, with Hurricane uh, Marie down in Puerto Rico. Oh, man. Uh as everybody knows, our people is going through it right now. Um, you know, I have tons of, we both have uh, a lot of family on the island, and uh, they're all being impacted by this, this crazy-ass storm. And, um, you know, we're just hoping that everyone pulls pulls through and everybody needs to look out for each other, especially uh, after the storm, because, you know, that's when uh, when the trouble really starts. Indeed, I couldn't say it any better. Like my prayers go out to my family and friends that are out there. It's a it's a rough situation. Conan, I'd like to, if you would, I'd like you to address the situation down in Mexico. Well, same thing, national disaster, bro. And you know, uh, when you live in Mexico and you live in Puerto Rico or Florida or wherever you're at, uh, you know that that can happen. So it's uh, it's tragic to see that they still. After the incredible earthquake of 85, so many people that died and so many structures that fell, that so many foundations in 2017 are falling because, you know, they weren't inspected correctly, uh, they didn't pass the building code or zoning laws, and um, so, and, and not only that, for those of you that don't know, Mexico City is basically built upon a lake bed because of some uh, vision that some Indians saw back in the day. but So it's not exactly on the best foundation either. So another tragedy, my heart goes out to Mexico. That's where I started. And, um, you know, just like the Puerto Ricans, they're going to rally. They're getting international corporation, and, and they're going to be up and running real soon. Conan, if you would, uh, one of the uh, current events I'd like you to address, please. Uh, you certainly spent a lot of time in uh, WCW around Bobby the Brain Heenan. Right. Yeah, Bobby, bro, uh, you know, I was already a Bobby Heenan fan because me, always growing up, I always liked the guys that could talk even if they couldn't wrestle. So, um, uh, you know, I was always really big into, um, like, Bobby Heenan because I just thought that anybody that he was with, he enhanced. And uh, even when he had a great talk, and I don't know how many pe people remember Nick Bockwinkle, but Nick Bockwinkle was a great talker, and yeah. uh, but... And so him and Heenan together were just incredible magic, and his wit was incredible. I used to remember I was watching um, some old tapes of him with Gorilla Monsoon. If you guys have never seen it, you should. It's back like in the 80s and shit, and they had like a like a show on on WWE and um, where they would cut the matches. And during the show, Bobby would be on the phone talking, and Gorilla was trying to always get him, you know, to quit talking on the air. Half the time, he was trying to get him fired. And it was really so, funny, you know, just the chemistry they had. Be they were just so ahead of their time, bro. And Bobby was that, took... Was that their, their talk show that they had? They yeah, had it was like kind of like a talk... Huh? Yeah, it was kind of like a show that they would sit at the table, and sometimes uh, Ventura would be there... And Right, right. Then they had another show where um, they would bring in, remember the three uh, fat ladies, uh, the Rosati sisters? I don't even know if yeah, you guys remember yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would just roast them on the air, bro, when you didn't have to be politically correct. So it was hilarious. Check some of that stuff out and you'll see the genius of Bobby the Brain. It was sad for me because I ran into him at a, what's this thing, uh, some wrestling convention. And he was there and he had like some sort of like maybe jar, throat cancer. And he just had his mouth, like, open, and, you know, he's trying to talk, and his wife was actually kind of, like, translating. And um, I was just like, man, he's here because he, he needs to feel the love of the people and the support. He would get so happy when anybody would remind him about something. 
just a great, great human being, great guy, incredible entertainer, man. We did lose a big one there. All righty. Well, uh, as everybody knows, we announced this week that uh, Bound for Glory will be on Sunday, November 5th in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada at the Aberdeen Pavilion. Tickets will go on sale uh, shortly. and uh, Check out uh, impactwrestling.com and our social media platforms early next week. We will have full ticket information. Uh, let me ask uh, you three guys, your thoughts about uh, got to be excited to be going to uh, Ottawa. I mean, it, it should be amazing. Uh, Ortiz and I have wrestled in Ottawa plenty of times, and it's an amazing city, and the people there are great. So I'm sure uh, having Balfour Glory there is definitely going to be something pretty cool. Oh, yeah, and especially in the capacity that we're doing it, it's going to be a big, big show. So, uh, yeah, we're excited, and we're excited to show the, the Canadian fans what it's all about. Yeah. You know that? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Ottawa Ottawa's has been one of our favorite places to work. And, uh, like, again, the fans there are so appreciative of everything that you do, and, and uh, it's definitely a good time, and everyone there likes to have fun. And one thing that's great is that the, uh, the fans in Ottawa are very vocal. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> look forward to that. Yo, well, since you guys went to Ottawa, you're gonna show me what uh, you're gonna have to show me what the nightlife is all about, because I certainly showed you what Tijuana nightlife's all about. <laughs> Boom! But uh, let me tell you about Ottawa, I, I, bro. That thing, that thing, kind of freaked me out because I was like, Canada, really? I like that. I like that it came out of nowhere. It's a Canadian company. Want to do it in Canada? Much love to the Canadian fans. You know, they're always one of the most hardcore fans. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, man, that we're getting out of the impact zone and traveling and other people can see us. So I, I thought that was a great decision. Conan, any, any chance you're going to be uh, skating with the Ottawa Senators? Uh, no, I am not a good ice skater. Okay. <laughs> well, we will open up for questions. Uh, all I ask, again, as we've asked in the past, please identify yourself and your media outlet. Please, one question only, and do not get back in queue until we uh, give you the heads up on that so we can get questions from everybody. We have a lot of media from around the world on this call. Unmuted. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. If you'd like to ask a question... Please press 1 to add your request has been received. Ryan Wright alive on Main Event Radio. Conan and LAX. I'm wondering, are any new members in the cards to be joining your group? Um, well, yeah, we're, we're always looking for new members, and especially, you know, we just uh, lost Low Key, who is such a unique and incredible character. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely on the lookout for somebody, and um, so definitely, yes. Very excited to have... GFW Impact, Bound for Glory, coming to Canada. Sweet, man. You going to be there? Of course. I'll be there, brother. All right, man. We'll check you out over there. What are else? You may now ask your question. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for allowing us to uh, join you here today. How are you all? Everyone's good. Chilling. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my question actually is for uh, Santana, particularly. Uh, Santana, uh, I am from, I'm a Puerto Rican from the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I'm actually from oh. the Ave. I'm actually from the Ave. Uh, born and raised oh, near word. Avenue D. Yes, sir. Um, I've known this for quite some time, and I've, I've been looking forward to talking to you about this. And I wanted to know, you know, I know the neighborhood. I'm very familiar with the neighborhood, so on and so forth. So how is it that a, that a kid from the Lower East Side gets to where you are right now? I mean, uh... As you know, being from the neighborhood and, and knowing the struggle and knowing what, you know, how the neighborhood is, it's not easy for anybody. But when you when you dead set on something and, uh, you know, wrestling has been something that has been a part of my life since I was very young. So, um, I mean, uh, it's just beating adversity. You know what I mean? My thing was always refusing to be one of those statistics. You feel me? So, uh, you know, and not saying that I, you know, I you know, we all go through life and we all experience different things, but, uh, um, I stood on the path, you know what I mean? I, I did what I did. And, and, you know, of course, everybody's young, you guys get stupid trouble and all this crap, but, um, 
for the most part is just uh, staying strong and, and keeping to your goals, you feel me? Like, just, um, you know, you know the neighborhood, you know how it is out there, so. Muted. Hi, it's uh, Adam from the KOTM podcast. Uh, good evening, gents. Uh, it's a question for Conan specifically, if I can. Um, I've noticed that since uh, LAX has come back on the scene at Impact Wrestling, there's, uh, the kind of language and the storylines that you've been involved in have been quite provocative, uh, especially some of the language, some of the backstage scenes then in, in Tijuana this week. Uh, is that something that you've pushed for to reintroduce into the programming, and do you think that's what wrestling needs today? Yeah, bro, I'm a provocateur, so I'm there to, you know, I'm there to engage you so i'm there to get you mad i'm there to, to make you think i'm there to make you go uh you know I, I don't like to do normal wrestling promos i'm gonna retire you you know i'm gonna do this all the bs that's just it's kind of hokey and it's corny so i'm just trying to get a reaction bro i'm just trying to get heat that's what i do it for Uh, I'm not uh, a big hello? fan of the awkward silence between calls, but go ahead. Yep. Hello? Yes, hello. Uh, Steph from Future Magazine. Uh, nice to talk to you guys. Um, I wanted to to ask you about um, the crash. Um, uh, currently, the um, uh, GFW Impact is working with AAA, no Pro Wrestling Noah, and um, do you think that an, an, um, an association or a partnership, excuse me, with um, between GFW and Crash can be possible? Oh, and yes, thank you, guys. All right, thank you. 100%, that's already been put into motion. Uh, our last TV taping, they taped about three, three matches. Um, one of them OVE with uh, LAX and two other teams from Tijuana, and it's already been shown highlights on Pop TV. And uh, so, yeah, there's definitely um, a cross pollination between us, uh, us and uh, GFW, and we'll continue to do so in the future. Hi, this is Jeremy Walker from Real Sport. A uh, general question for all of you. Uh, what do you think sets this incarnation of LAX apart from the, the previous one? Oh, well, obviously that it's got different members in it. You know, it's got different members in it, and um, the rhetoric is the same, you know, um, and the message is the same, um, and I think the attitude is the same. And plus, you know, now we have a, a female in the group, so it's, two whole different um, feelings and uh, personalities, but centered under the same concept. Uh, yeah, 100%. We try to keep true to, the, to the, uh, where LAX was before, but we have a, a new, new spice to it pretty much. We, we're, we're keeping up with the times, and we wrestle the style of today's age. And uh, but we're still violent and we still go in. We like uh, that lucha strong style kind of um, uh, thing that we have going on. Hey guys, this is Graham Matthews from Pinnermote.com. Uh, Conan, this one's for you. Uh, is there anything you can add to the rumors from a few weeks ago of Rainer Stereo potentially coming to GFW Impact Wrestling? Your involvement in the process, and if there's still a chance we can see Rainer Stereo in Impact Wrestling down the road. Uh, yeah, I was definitely very heavily involved in it because I represent him. But, uh, we, you know, we were talking, uh, talks broke down, um, and we're trying to repair, uh, those talks. And hopefully, you know, in the future, uh, you know, Ray may come, may come to GFW, but, um, uh, that was some, something that de definitely was in the works. Hey guys, it's Kyle Stevens from stillrealtous.com. Uh, Conan, this question specifically for you. Um, right. I know that you are one of the most outspoken personalities in the industry. You don't really hold back from telling your story, which I really respect. Why do you feel more people in the wrestling industry don't state their mind when push comes to shove? Well, 
I can't believe that in the wrestling community you don't know that you get heat if you speak your mind, and that it even happens, you know, on some, you know, major league uh, baseball, football teams also. But in wrestling, you know, they they ha- they have all these instruments, whether it's fear, intimidation, uh, you know, uh, not getting a push. You know, they send you messages not to speak what you think. That's always got me in a lot of hot water. But that's that's the reason because you're gonna get heat. Hey, Conan, Jim Barcelona here, Miami Herald. How you doing? Yo, what it do, my boy Jim? You went for life. Boom. Always good to talk <laughs> to you, man. All right, so women's right. You mentioned women in the LAX, Diamante. And right. have you seen women in wrestling change over the years to what it's become today and just how things are elevating today for women? How, how good can it get? Oh, man, 1,000%, because I grew up on the Japanese wrestling. If you remember, like, uh, you know, Manami Toyota and uh, Hokuto and Aja Kong and all those incredibly physical, talented Japanese women. Then you had, in Mexico, you had a lot of uh, uh, great, great workers, starting with Lola Gonzalez. And then you would come to the United States, and they were so brutal, you know, and... um and now, finally, there is like a women's revolution where they're going out there and they're having some great matches, you know, and you can even have a match, intergender matches, and people get into it, you know. Um, yeah, they've done a great job, you know. They're just going to get better and better. Um, the one thing I haven't seen from women's wrestling yet is the high flyers. Imagine when the women start flying high because they're going to they're gonna come out, they're going to break out some real cool shit because they're a lot lighter and they're a lot shorter. So they're going to break out some really cool stuff. So I, I can't wait till that part comes. Hey, guys. Ryan Bowman from thegrillposition.com. <clears throat> this question is for Ortiz and Santana. LAX has been around in uh, different carnations in the past, and it's always centered around the legendary Conan. You guys are the new generation of the group. What are your plans to take LAX to the next level? Well, continuing the uh, the level of physicality and everything that we're doing, um, you know, we're still keeping and staying true to the the tradition of of what Conan had coming before. Um, and yeah, and our plan is just to keep uh, keeping up with the times and revolutionizing it and, and making it a thousand times percent better. You know. Yeah, we just want to up the ante. Uh, just be innovative and uh, do it in such a way that we're still staying true to ourselves. Hey, Tim here from GF The Talk from Germany. Um, uh, Global Force is on TV in Germany right now on Run, Zad and Fighting. And I know Santana and Artis are coming to Germany to the World Tag Team League. Are you looking forward to this or have you any connection to Germany? Oh man, we're, we're definitely looking forward to it. It's our first time coming to Germany and uh, for such a prestigious tag team tournament and uh, representing the U.S. and you know not even just that, but representing ourselves in this tournament along with uh, you know you got guys like the Briscoes, you got Homicide and Loki, you have uh, you know David Starr and so many talented guys that are part of this tournament. So uh, coming over is definitely going to be something special to us. Yeah, plus it's Oktoberfest, so I'm looking to go get uh, a little bit trashed. It'll be fun. Plus, they big German guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Hi, this is a question for Santana and uh, Ortiz. It's uh, Adam from the KTM podcast again. Obviously, Conan is uh, quite uh, an outspoken figure. Do you guys talk about how you're going to try and develop your personalities on screen with uh, Conan obviously taking front stage. Oh, well, yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, you know, we we had some flavor to us already and in, in having uh, Conan coach us through things and, and teach us the ways that, uh, you know, his vision and, and how he sees things, um, you know what I mean? And, and also being able to learn from him, he's one of the greatest minds in the history of wrestling. So, I mean, what, what else can you, can you say? <clears throat> Hi, 
Hi, this is Raj with Wrestling Inc. Um, my question is for Conan. <clears throat> um, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on Alberto El Patron returning at Bound for Glory. And uh, do you see your feud with Alberto resuming when he returns? Um, they've spoken to me about a couple of things with Alberto, but I don't even think they're sure what they want to do. Um, you know, Alberto is a uh, straight up brother. I'm telling you this. He is a one of a kind entertainer, you know, and he goes out there and he leaves it all in the ring. Um, uh, so I would love for them, you know, for us to do something with ADR, but you know, that's definitely up to creative. Hi guys, it's James Marston from Across the Pond Wrestling here. Uh, firstly, I just wanted to say I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Ortiz and Santana over in Germany in a couple of weeks. And uh, My question was, uh, to anyone who wants it really, what do you consider your worst experience as a professional wrestler and why? You guys go ahead. Uh, I would say worst experience. I just say the the long car rides. Those are the worst because I I think that takes a toll on your body more than the actual wrestling. Like if you think about it, you're wrestling maybe ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, and if that, and then you have to get in a car for twelve hours. Like driving back from Ottawa, Canada, it's uh it's a little rough. So I would say the long car rides because Santana always goes to sleep. So you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not what a bum. Also, uh, honestly, uh, we haven't come across any, any, anything too crazy. I mean, we've kept it cool with, you know, we like to consider ourselves the two chill dudes that, you know, a lot of the time we keep to ourselves and, and you know, we're cool with everyone. And, and, yeah, so we haven't really experienced nothing too too crazy that, uh, you know, was set us off in any way. Yeah, he would say the car rides, but he's sleeping half the time, so, yeah. <laughs> Jordan, you want to chime in on that? Oh, bro, I've had so many, but um, I don't know. My last time at TNA wasn't a lot of fun. Uh, my last time in AAA wasn't a lot of fun either. Um, I'm not an easy person to work with either. You know, I understand that. But at the end of the day, I'll only play the game so long. That's why I started my own promotion, because the day that I have to work for somebody that it's, that's inept or micromanaging me, which has happened when they know less than me, uh, hey, I'm willing to listen if you know what you're talking about or you know more than me, but if you don't, move out of the way because I got shit to do. So that's why I started my own promotion because the day that uh, I want to, I have somewhere to go because in this business, when you have no options, it's when you're the most vulnerable and people are only going to be loyal to you as long as it's convenient. So you better have a backup plan in case something happens, and I do. Right now I'm happy, you know what I'm saying? So everything's chill. If you'd like to ask a your request has been received. Hey, this is uh, Chris Featherstone from WrestleZone.com and Pancakes of Power Sim. So how y'all doing today? Hey, what's up? What up? This best for this best for Conan. Um, you speaking of AAA as far as just uh, uh, your negotiate, uh, just just your status with them. Uh, speaking of status, uh, we saw low key as part of uh, LAX for a few weeks. Uh, right. That didn't really pan out to be uh, to, to last too long. Uh, you were talking about frustrations and, and working with people as well. Did he ever have discussions with you as far as his his frustrations of, of working at, uh, for GFW? Uh, low key, low key, yes, yeah. Well, you know, Loki's a lot like me in that he's very difficult to work with too. Very opinionated. Um, he thinks that the last few times he was there they didn't use him to his uh maximum p potential i would concur with that and uh, at the end of the day you know he was hot about a lot of stuff one of them which i would concur again was why did you bring him to new york in his hometown to lose against drago now drago no shade you know i got no problem with the triple a wrestlers um, you know, I'm just, I'm not hating, I'm just stating, but why was he doing a job to drag on his hometown who is not under contract and wasn't at the next TV tapings? That type of stuff will get you hot. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I think they dropped the ball there and creatively they said they didn't have anything for him, which I found very hard to believe. But, you know, like I said, he's very, uh, he's a very, uh, strong headed person and, um, you know, hopefully uh, we can work with him again one day. Hey, 
Hey, this is Arup Alkar from SportsKira.com. And hey, uh, my question is, uh, my question is towards Otis and Santana. So, how does it feel to work under an esteemed veteran like Conan? Uh, it's 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 been an it's been an amazing experience so far. I mean, um, again, he has one of the greatest minds of wrestling, and to be able to uh, sit in and on a personal level and speak with him and have him teach us and and learn so many different things, um, it's definitely truly special. And again, being under the the LEX banner and and shit like that, you know, uh, guys like Conan who who are you know who he is who he is. They, they, you know, a guy like him wouldn't just put his name on anyone. He wouldn't uh, just whatever. So it's definitely something truly special to us. A hundred percent. And it's just uh, we couldn't be in a better situation. We're super fortunate. We were guys that are were fairly fairly unknown and uh, came into the TV, and it was literally sink or swim. And luckily, we swam. Uh, and that's kudos to Conan and uh, Homicide. Just kind of like guiding us and give us, giving us the, the 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 pieces to the puzzle to put it together the right way. So, yeah, it's been awesome. Hey, Jim Barcelona again, Conan. With things that are going on and rumors, which finally got squashed about Anthem, and then I guess things are going on with Jeff Jarrett. Just how do you deal with all that? You've been around a long time and all, but when you hear like latest things going on like that, what is going through your mind? Uh, <clears throat> that's always going to happen, bro. You know, like in sports teams, they change general managers and, you know, coaches all the time, and it happens in wrestling too when a booker gets fired or he leaves or gets a better offer or whatever the situation is. I'm kind of excited to see what the new regime has in store for us because even though they worked with Jeff, you know, they have their own ideas. So let's see what they got, you know, and, and, and so I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, uh, very happy to see some new people get a crack at it and see what they got going. They got some smart people in there, you know, my boy Jeremy Borash, Abyss, you know, and so Sanjay's in there. Um, uh, so I, 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 I want to see what they come up with. It's going to be cool. Hi, Conan. This is Rory from Team Venom Media. Um, I um, well, we've seen a tremendous amount of changes to Global Force and Impact this year, including many talent coming and going. What brought you and the new version of LAX back to Impact, and what are your goals going forward? Well, basically, what it was is uh, Jeff Jarrett had reached out to me, and, and uh, they wanted me to do some other gimmick. They wanted me to, me to be the mouthpiece for another wrestler. Uh, and I think he needed a mouthpiece. And number two, um, in the back of my mind, I didn't like how my tenure ended with LAX because they were sticking people in there. I would have never stuck in there when I left. They changed my whole entrance song. It was all whack. And I was like, I can't believe. So I wanted to come back and kind of leave on a better note, you know, because this is probably, for all intentional purposes, my last run in the United States. Uh, who knows unless something else comes up, but this is probably it. And so I wanted to, to go out, you know, on, on a higher note than I did last time where I just quit and left. And so, um, you know, we brought in Ortiz, Santana, the Amante, Homicide, and we're like family, you know, uh, you got to have a certain chemistry for this to work. You just can't be two guys that come to work. And, you know, like we on a social level, you know, Ortiz and Santana, you know, they, they were friends, so they already had a chemistry. And so now, you know, Diamante and, and Homicide, all of us, you know, we'll hang out like after the show and there's a certain bond, bonding there that translates into the ring and in the promos. So, um, you know, we're just uh, uh, trying to make a name for these two guys and keep the LAX thing going and let's see what happens. Okay, thank you very much. All right. We will open it up. If you guys have a second question, feel free to get back in the queue. You may now ask your question. Hey, gentlemen, it's Big Ray for OneWrestling.com again. Uh, my question is to anyone who can actually answer the question. Um, possibly, I'll direct it towards Conan. You have one of the mo more dominant figures in, I guess, Impact Wrestling history in Homicide on your squad. 
So my question to you right. is, how come? And again, I'm a huge fan of Homicide. Always been a fan of his in-ring work. I've spoken to Sean Hernandez a few times. I've never been able to get a, a really straight answer regarding why is Homicide not in the ring on a regular basis? How come he's not, let's say, going for an X Division title or even the world title at this point in juncture? Yeah, man, that's a mystery to me, too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at the beginning, they just had him there kind of like a cheerleader type thing. And I was like, bro, this guy can bring so much more. Um, so I really, that's not a question I could really answer. I know it's frustrated him. Uh, it's very frustrating to just be there and not being able to go. So I don't, you know, I couldn't even tell you on that one. Muted. Hey, Arup Alter again from sportskeeda.com. Uh, my question is to Conan. And my question is that since you have like 30 plus years of experience now in pro wrestling now, so how much input do you have creatively as far as storylines and promos for LAX goes? Um, you know, pretty, pretty much whatever, whatever we want to do, they'll listen. And, and uh, we've ran into a couple, because I like to push the envelope, we've ran into a couple of speed bumps here and there. You can't say this, you can't do that. But I kind of have a feeling we're going to be able to push it a little bit more. Uh, with the new regime, and that's what I like to do, you know, just do s something that hasn't been seen in a while or that nobody else is doing, so you can stand apart, and you know what I'm saying? So, um, but but uh, they, they do listen to us creatively. Hi, this is Raj Giri with WrestlingInc.com again. Uh, Conan, there were some rumors uh, earlier about uh, Rey Mysterio's negotiations uh, with certain right. companies uh, possibly being affected because of past heat over the Max Moon character. Uh, is there any truth to that? And what exactly happened with the whole Max Moon costume and, and, and that whole situation? Bro, the Max Moon thing is very easy. Uh, you know, when I had met Vince McMahon, um, I told him about this idea I saw in Japan for like this animated robot uh, and so he was like alright we'll do it and we did but I lived at the time and the guy that was making the robot outfit lived in LA so I would have to fly from Mexico to LA pick up all these boxes and then bring them all the way to like sometimes I'd be in Cape Cod and then they'd have to put it in a taxi and it was a, just a pain in the ass really and so what happened was at that time I started to blow up in Mexico I had done this soap opera and this rap record and it was doing good. So, you know, I had back, you know, I would, I had crossed over into the mainstream and I was a big draw as a wrestler. I mean, I was, I was getting paid, bro. And so when I went to, uh, to TV, I was like, you know, bro, I'm the man in Mexico. Why am I coming to WWE? And so I just stopped going. And so, um, uh, basically Paul Diamond, you know, told Vince that he could fit into the outfit and he could so they gave him the persona and from then supposedly i had this incredible heat but when i've seen vince backstage he's like yo you know he hey what's up conan i'm stephanie everybody when they don't want you there bro they let you know you know and i know they've even stopped people from from actually being in the dress room they've never done that to me so i'm not sure if that if that heat is still there or what the deal is but that's the story Uh, Stephanie from Stepcha Magazine again. Um, I wanted to to have Conan. So you've you've been in the business for thirty years. Um, uh, you talk about Bobby Heenan, um, and I, I I wanted to ask you: uh, Is there a special moment, something, or oh, a special uh, people, um, someone you want to talk about with us? Um, something you a uh, great remember uh, people that um, uh, that was important for you in this business. And thank you again. Yeah, there's too many to mention. Way, way, way too many. You know, from the great, crazy, this guy miss a lot because he was a lot like me in that he said whatever he wanted to, which was Brian Pillman, you know. Uh, so, you know, Chris Benoit, um, uh, and of course, you know, my boy Eddie. And um, I knew when he was young, and uh, he was training me in his backyard, and I was teaching him how to do weights. 
I knew back then he was going to be incredible. I never knew he'd be this incredible um, because when he was in Mexico, he didn't even, he was very shy. He was introverted, introverted. Um, I never thought that personality that came out in WWE, I knew it was there, but I'd never seen it on the screen. So it was just great when he took it to the next level. One of probably my favorite scene of all time in wrestling is uh, when him and Benoit won the belts and they were hugging in the middle. And I was like, wow, man, finally, you know, these guys got rewarded because I know what they went through. Um, but uh, Eddie, especially somebody who's very hard for me still to this day, very special guy, very special guy. Hey, this is Chris Featherstone from WrestleZone.com Wrestle and the Pancakes and Power Slam show again. This is for Conan. Uh, of course, we know that uh, you were a member of the legendary NWO. Uh, just from your standpoint, wh what do you think, you know, because a lot of people start part of the NWO, start to dilute its potency. Where do you think it turned a corner from a negative standpoint? Uh, first of all, I like the name Pancakes and Power Slams, and I also like another chat that was on here called, called the Gorilla uh, Position or something. But, um, uh, bro, I, that was it. That was it. When you started diluting the product, when you started to put in guys that, you know, were lower-level guys like myself that nobody even knew, it was like, you know, they had just, so it just kind of became a joke, and then you had, like, the Japanese version of it, and, you know, bro, when we would go up there sometimes, it looked like a, you know, like a rally, you know, there were so many people in, so, yeah, that, that's really what, what that, that's why we started the Wolf Pack, because it was just, like, five of us, or, and, you know, that was it, you know what I'm saying, and then they started to dilute, too, it was just crazy at the end. Hey guys, Brian Matthews from Hidden again. Uh, what's been the inspiration behind the Lucha Underground S vignette we've kind of uh, seen on uh, recent Impact episodes, showcasing LAX in various settings since the reformation of the group? And between that and the unique entrance that you guys have, uh, do you stand out from everything else in the show? Uh, yeah, one thousand percent, bro. And I think I said that in an earlier conversation. I like to set myself apart so everything doesn't look the same. And the same thing goes for the promos. I don't like to do wrestling promos. I don't like to do stuff that you've already seen. It's kind of hard not to because everything has been done or seen. So sometimes you're putting a twist on it. Um, uh, but basically, um, Jeremy Borash, I had told him, I go, bro, we need to do whatever we do. We need to have like a cinematic look to it, you know. And um, so, we, you know, that, 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 that's why you're getting that look. You know, that's Jeremy. He's, he's incredible. Guys, Ryan Bowman from thegorillaposition.com. Uh, your oh. opponents on, no on November 5th, Ohio versus everything, they're new to the company, but they had a great reputation coming in. Obviously, they're out of luck at Bound for Glory, but uh, what kind of potential do you see them in the long term? Thanks. Uh, you guys have wrestled them a lot before, or no? Uh, no. We wrestled uh, no. in like multi man matches, but never like straight up in tag. But I mean, they have a good history, uh, just like bringing it. Um, they were Irish Airborne and Ring of Honor for a short while. Like they've had insane matches. Um, yeah, I mean, long run, definitely see them doing well. But I mean, <laughs> when it comes to versus us, not so much. But outside of that. Yeah, they definitely have a lot of potential to flourish in the company. What I like about them is, like, um, you know, when you're putting together a match, sometimes you know they're guys you can't do nothing with because they don't want to take a bump or they're limited or that's not their style. And these guys, they're going to take any bump you want. So we know our matches with them are always going to be good. 100%. righty, well, I think... Uh, opening up for a final thought, uh, Santana. What do you think? Uh, I think it was great. Um, you know, thanks for having us, and uh, I think uh, this was great for for guys to to know a little bit of part of what we're doing and what we're trying to do. And um, yeah, thanks for having us a part of it. Ortiz. Uh, yeah, just uh, bound for glory. Just. Uh, 
definitely tune in, watch, and we're definitely going to take it to the next level. We, we, we got some stupid ideas planned out, so it should be fun. <laughs> Um, before I give a final statement, I would like to thank everybody that called in that nobody took this little question that I know Ross Foreman put, and this was the question. What is Conan's take on the summer hit song Despacito from <laughs> Lu Luis Ponce? Okay? I am so glad nobody asked me that question. I would like to say that just that for you even printing that question, you're very soft because I don't listen to that fruit roll-up stuff. But I can't imagine Ross Foreman doing a cartwheel in a bikini while he's listening to this song. Don't you ever bring that song up again. That's number one. Number two, I want to say that so far in GFW, it's been awesome. I've had a great time at Nordholm. Very pragmatic guy. It was great to come back and see guys like Roberto, Bobby Rye Ryder, Ross Foreman, uh, Keith Mitchell, you know, all the backstage people. It's been great. It's been really fun, and I can't wait to see uh, what's coming up on the horizon. LAX 5150, boom. Hey, uh, Conan, I, I yeah. do have to have the final say on that. And for the record, it was not a cartwheel. It is a somersault. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> So, I, bet. Right, I would appreciate it. Any other final bet. thought? Uh, baseball season, uh, home stretch, your Red Sox looking pretty strong. Bro, we, we got no power with Poppy and Napoli out. Uh, historically, we've always been one of the best heading teams, but everybody's average went down bets, Bradley, Bogarts. But I picked them at the beginning of the year. I'm a ride with them. I know Santana Ortiz must be happy with the Yanks because I didn't think they were going to hang on to the end. Even Pat. Simon Diamond Kenny, who's a humongous Yankee fan, thought that at the end they were going to slide. Yeah. Honestly, I haven't even been following too much because I've been caught up in, you know, life and shit. But, uh, but uh, supposedly, yeah, they've been doing pretty well. So. Yeah. All righty. Conan, Santana, Ortiz, I appreciate your time very much. And we'll be back with another uh, teleconference next week. Thanks, everybody, for calling in. Thank All you. right, be Thank cool. Thank you. Later.